Well, the United Nations highest court releasing a preliminary ruling on a stunning accusation by South Africa that Israel has committed genocide in Gaza. South Africa, a longtime ally of the Palestinians, wanted the court to call for an immediate ceasefire today. That did not happen. Instead, the court ordered six provisional measures for Israel to comply with to better protect Palestinian civilians in Gaza. Israel will have to report back in a month on what it's doing on that front. As to the larger question of whether Israel is guilty or not of genocide, that case will take years for the court to hear and issue a final verdict on. But even this preliminary ruling is significant. Canada's Foreign Affairs Minister Melanie Jolie writing in part, Canada supports the ICJ's critical role in the peaceful settlement of disputes and its work in upholding the international rules-based order. Our support for the ICJ does not mean that we accept the premise of the case brought by South Africa. It is for the ICJ to make a final decision on the case, which it has not done today. We continue to follow the case very closely. All right, let's bring in two of Canada's former foreign affairs ministers to weigh in. Peter McKay was the foreign affairs minister in the government of Stephen Harper and Lloyd Axworthy, foreign affairs minister in the government of Jean Chrétien. Gentlemen, great to have both of you with us here on Power right. Play. And uh, Mr. Axworthy, if I can start with you, what you think this ruling mm -hmm. by the world court means? Well, I think it means that there's a, a chance now to bring this conflict under some rule of law, some international order. And I think that the uh, balancing of the decision between uh, clearly recognizing the right of the uh, Israeli government to provide uh, security for its country is recognized, but at the same time, not without some clear guidelines, some rules, some, some uh, uh, guardrails in which what you can do to make sure that civilians are not overly uh, traumatized or violated. And so I think it's, uh, it's going to be, uh, it, it's a big move forward, in my view, towards what may be uh, an opportunity for solution for, it may bring about uh, a, a different kind of climate. And I think even recognizing what the Americans are kind of, you know, backing away from when they were calling this whole thing reckless, they're now saying, well, we were kind of with it all along. So I, I hope that this will change the, the atmospheres and it will, uh, will open up uh, for a proper and effective uh, solution to the conflict. Mr. McKay, your read and the significance of it as well. Well, I, I agree with much of what Lloyd has said. I, I think it, it may bring about more dialogue. It may put uh, some parameters. But this is, let's be clear, Todd, this is not a ruling as, as much as it is a commitment to further process which speaks to the complexity of, of all of this. Uh, the guardrails or, or the parameters that, uh, that have been laid out, again, uh, I believe we are already hearing from the Prime Minister of Israel that they are in fact doing these things around humanitarian support and allowing for the, the movement of goods into Gaza. And so, sadly, the, the process uh, that uh, exists could in fact take years because Previously, when this court ruled with respect to Ukraine, they made a very definitive statement uh, with respect to what the Russians were doing. That didn't happen in this case, uh, but they have committed to reporting back and they've committed to further examination of evidence and circumstance. And so this is by far the, the you know, the, the minimum, I suppose, that they could have said. And we are going to see, obviously, more submissions, more evidence brought forward in the future. Mr. Axworthy, what do you think it means for the fighting on the ground? What's going on currently in Gaza? Well, I think that the decision today uh, will have an out uh, outcome, an impact on that. I mean, clearly, as uh, Peter said, there's been some withdrawal and there is negotiations going on for some kind of a ceasefire. I think this adds uh, impetus to that. It's going to give it some momentum because there's now a rationale. But the important thing for all of us, you know, you, Todd, you talk about the bigger picture, is that we're now, we've spent a lot of time, a lot of decades actually, since the Second World War, trying to build some kind of uh, international legal framework to put constraints and to require accountability for governments when it comes to the treatment of civilians, both their own and, and, uh, and those in other countries. And we've, we've been in a very brutal period these last couple of years, the, the invasion of uh, of Ukraine, what's going on in places like Myanmar, Sudan, this whole use of, of violent force against people. Uh, and I think this now just may be a, a, a step 
going back into trying to rebuild that architecture of, of, of legal responsibility. And that's why I think that it's important for the, for the Canadian government to, as it said, uh, to recognize the importance of this decision, but also to do more. I mean, I think there are other areas. I mean, there still is the, another court at work, the International Criminal Court, which is looking at war crimes on both sides. And I think that, again, enhances uh, the concept that we can live in, in a little bit more of an orderly and restrained system without letting the, the dogs of war run wild. Uh, do you think, Peter, this is a setback for Israel or not? What's your, what's your, uh, your read? How would you characterize it? Well, that's a good question, Todd. I, I think certainly reputationally this uh, keeps the question open about genocide and it, it shouldn't be lost on anyone that the 1948 Convention on Genocide specifically referred to the crimes against Israel and the Holocaust. And so there is no question that this, uh, this keeps a, a very negative narrative about um, you know, excessive use, the, the risk of course, and the harm to to uh, civilians, innocent civilians. Uh, Lloyd Ackworthy and I took part in a, an important discussion in Ottawa on this very subject of how we try to protect civilians, innocent uh, persons who are caught in the crossfire, so to speak. And so this, this process, this commitment to rule of law, this uh, focus on trying to get to peace and to a better place is extremely important. But the court itself has not made a definitive ruling here. It's a step right. along the path to peace, and uh, that is going to continue in other venues as well, as Lloyd, as Lloyd referenced. Yeah, uh, Lloyd, any takeaways for you on what this preliminary ruling might mean for the larger case? Uh, well, I, I think what it sets out is a, a series of uh, criteria or metrics that will be measured in terms of the impact upon people, the supply of aid. I, I think one of the worst aspects of what's been happening is, is uh, the closing off of so much of the uh, opportunity for uh, people in Gaza itself to have health care, to have water, to have food, to go to school. I mean, I, th I think that that's what really disrupts and disturbs a lot of people. And I think that the, this ruling uh, should open up the, the doorway a little bit. And I think the fact that Israel actually uh, participated in this court junction, it really shows you know, that, that there is a role for judicial um, appearance, and Israel, to its credit, uh, made an, uh, an argument. So it wasn't rebuffing like the Russians simply ignoring it. They clearly are paying attention. And what I ho what I'm hoping now is that uh, the Netanyahu government will see this as an opportunity, really a, a, a something to, to readjust or recalibrate w what's happening and try to find some way out. Because, I mean, I, 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 this is a much larger topic, Todd, but I think, uh, I, I, in my view at least, you're not going to solve the problem there until you find some way of establishing some form of a, of a proper state for the Palestinians to live in. As long as they are created as third-class citizens, uh, you're not going to have peace in that area. Peter, how would you characterize what we've heard from the Canadian government? A statement was issued, kind of difficult to make heads or tails of what exactly they're saying. Uh, what, what do you think? Yeah, it is difficult to really discern any movement uh, away from sort of a, a balanced position on the one hand this, but on the other hand that. But I come back to, to the, the idea of the larger picture here. This is, uh, this is a ruling, of course, that says we're going to look at this further. Uh, you know, the hope is that there will be a forum for discussion. But the severe issue here is that you have a state involved with a conflict uh, with a terrorist organization. And this goes back to that horrendous attack that began uh, the unraveling of a very fragile and, and often volatile relationship. And so one would certainly hope that uh, restraint, which is a word that gets thrown around a lot and, and all cautions being taken to protect civilians, but there, there really is no dialogue when you have a terrorist organization committed to the destruction of the neighboring country. That is where it all comes undone, and that is where the violence, uh, I, I'm afraid, uh, is at risk of, of keeping civilians in harm's way. Peter McKay, Lloyd Axworthy, Todd, both of them. Yes, go ahead, Mr. Axworthy, last comment to you. I'm just going to make one comment in terms of Peter's point. One of the sort of gaps in our international legal framework is the way in which we treat non-state actors. That's a play way of saying a bunch of militias, crooks, uh, 
uh, gangs, terrorists. And I think we have to be brought in the law. And actually, I would hope that there would be a further reference to say, how do we actually hold them accountable? Not just governments, but all these not state actors that act as governments have the, and we're in the areas we're seeing with the Houthi Yemen of having access to modern technology of weapons. Boy, that's dangerous. And I think there's got to be a, that same kind of uh, legal order applied to them. Lloyd Axworthy and Peter McKay, both of them former foreign affairs ministers serving in the governments of Stephen Harper and Jean mm -hmm. Chrétien, uh, both of them very familiar with the volatility in the Middle East. Gentlemen, thanks for taking the time for Power Play. It's great to see both You're of you. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you.